Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here to do a tutorial for you to show you how I made this acetate shaker pouch. And this is the one we're making today. And just to show you, um, it's about four inches wide by about six inches tall. And just to show you that it does hold quite a bit in here. I just stuck some bows in here that I purchased from Sparkling Ghoul and it's just perfectly. All right, so let's get into it and I'll show you how I created it. So today I have a tutorial for you and this is based on an entry that I submitted for With Love Brie. She was having a birthday challenge in March and I submitted these shaker pouches for her challenge giveaway. And I had a few people reach out to me and ask me to do a tutorial on it for them. I'm so sorry that it's taken me this long to get it done, but as you guys know, I've had a lot going on. I traveled and I tried to get it done before I had to travel in March, but that just didn't happen. So better late than never, I am here to do this tutorial for you today and I hope you guys enjoy it. So what you see in front of you here, this is another pouch that I created for this tutorial so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, this is a shaker, this is acetate, and um, this particular one I did an experiment on. For the other pouches that I created for Brie, I actually sewed around the edges. For this particular one, I did not. I use the red line tape, and I usually like to use the red line tape when I'm working with acetate because it sticks a whole lot better and it lasts longer. But this one I totally made out of the red line tape and a little bit of glossy accent glue. You could also use glossy accent. Glossy accent is really good for working with acetate as well. And when I make my, sh my shakers, I usually tend to gravitate to either glossy accent or the red line tape. So this one is um, holding up pretty well. I made this one yesterday and I don't see any gaps or anything. It seems to be holding up pretty good. And so I guess the red line tape is another option that you can use to create this. Okay, so um, what it is is I have this cover here. I have Velcro on it. You can only put one Velcro dot if you want. I use two. I use this solid paper and then I used another sheet of paper for the inside so you have something visually interesting to look at, but you don't have to do that. You can also use double-sided paper, which works really well for this too. But you need to be really careful with the double-sided paper because some of the patterns are directional and you wanna make sure that when you flip your your um, flap over that the images are not upside down. So I like to use paper that is not directional so that um, it can go either way. You won't have to worry about that. So for this one, um, to hide the, the tape, I used some of this ribbon here that I got from Hobby Lobby just to hide the red line tape that you could see. Or you could use some other like Rick Rack or something else like that. And then I used this pom pom trim here. I created this cluster here using um, a digital printout of a Maggie Holmes flower. I have this puffy heart. I have this. Rosette, couldn't remember the name. This Rosette from Anna Griffin. And this swan here, I got in a swap, a summer swap from Carolina of Carolina's Crafts. And I'm just using it now. And then this gold doily underneath is from my stash. This bow is from Sparkling Ghoul. I purchased some bows from her. And then this other trim is from my stash, as well as this hello that I put on top of the bow. So that's what I created. These gussets are half an inch. I created these ones half an inch, but for the tutorial, I'm gonna be doing it a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and get into that and I'll show you how to make this. So you're gonna need your scoreboard for this. You're gonna need some paper of your choice. I'm using a double-sided paper from Maggie Holmes Garden Party Collection. And you're also gonna need some acetate. Okay, so I've already pre-measured this and I've scored it. So this acetate piece, we're gonna start with this first. This acetate piece is 10 and a half inches and we're gonna score it at five and a quarter. I'm gonna score it at five and a quarter and then we're gonna fold it in half. We're gonna burnish it. Okay, burnish it and then put it off to the side. 
Now the width of this is four inches and based on my measurements for this paper here, it is going to be four inches wide when we're finished with it. Okay, so this paper measures six by seven and a quarter inch. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna put it on a seven and a quarter inch side and we're gonna score it at one and a quarter and one and a half. Then you're gonna rotate it clockwise and we're going to score at quarter of an inch from top to bottom. We're gonna score at a half inch, three quarters of an inch, and one inch. And then we're gonna skip all the way to five and we're gonna score at five, five and a quarter, five and a half, and five and three quarter. Okay, and then that's it for our scoring. We can put the scoreboard away. And then we're going to take our scissors. Okay, and then you see where this line is here. We're gonna cut all the way down to this second score line here and across. And we're gonna do the same thing on that side. Okay, so then now what we're going to do is we're going to fold and burnish our score lines. So for this side here, we're going to start folding this line towards us and then we're gonna fan fold it on both sides. Okay, so once you finish your scoring and burnishing, you wanna make sure that the edge piece is facing out, okay? So just like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our acetate and we're gonna have the folded piece at the top. Okay, and then you're gonna line it up starting at the bottom and you're gonna secure it into place. Now you can open these up can open up your folds if you want to because it will work better and I have these little clips here that I got on Amazon I used to use these when I was making baby quilts it holds your fabric together really well and it doesn't move and it's a lot better than working with pins because you don't poke yourself okay so you're gonna make sure that your acetate edges are lined up perfectly and you're gonna line up the bottom of your paper, of your cardstock, with the acetate, okay? And then I use these clips to secure it into place. And I go all the way up to the edge of the acetate, okay? So that's what that looks like. And this is about a half inch from the top here to here. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna zigzag all the way down here, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, so I did a zigzag stitch in pink thread. You can see all the way from here to here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same on this side. And the thing is, you have to do one side and then the other, otherwise it's gonna to be too much trouble. You're gonna to have to go, for, for this side here, I went from the top down, and then from this for this side, I'm gonna go from the bottom up when I sew. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so there we have both sides. And then once you have that all done, you're just gonna make sure that everything sits in place. It's looking pretty good. And then the next step you're gonna do is, you, let me cut this off here. Next thing you're gonna do is you're going to 
spread open the acetate at the bottom and put your sequin in. So I created a sequin mix. I have it in this jar. It comes with a spoon. And this is my sequin mix. And what I did was I picked all the colors that were in this on this side of the paper. And I'm going to be generous putting it in here. Okay. So once you get all your sequin mix in there, then we're going to take the sewing machine and we're going to put all the layers together like this. You guys, I'm sorry about the lighting. It's really gloomy here today. And we're going to zigzag from here to here and close it up. Okay, so here it is all finished. And we've done all the sides. I've sewed the bottom. I've put in the sequin. And now we're going to put on the Velcro. So like I said, for the Velcro, you could put one dot here or you could put them on two sides. I like to put it on two sides because sometimes when you put it in the middle, the sides kind of flip up a little bit. So I like to put two on them. So there it is, you guys, all done. I just love the way this comes out. It really shakes around really well. And then you can turn around and decorate it however you like. Now, just to let you know that the stitching is gonna show on the back at the bottom. So if you don't like that, you can cover it up or just leave it as it is or add some pom-pom trim like I did with this one. I just added some pom-pom trim on the bottom of this one. But this one, remember, I did this one with the um, red line tape so you don't see it on the back but that is an option for you to do. So that is the shaker pouch that I created. I'm so sorry about the lighting, you guys. Um, like I said, it's a gloomy day. It's not showing up too well, but there you go. And I absolutely love the way this turned out. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will have more pictures of this in better lighting on my Instagram page if you guys wanna check it out. So I hope this helped for those of you who asked, and um, if you do make it, please go ahead and tag me. I'd love to see what you create. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon and thank you so much for watching.